I don't know what else to say, but I feel like I haven't said much. Hey, it's Sue in the Restricted section. Um, today I'm doing a review of the book The Song of the Forest by Colin McKay. Um, this is a random one that I picked up at that library sale that Megan and I went to a while back. And it is about um, the inhabitants of a remote village in Scotland in the Dark Ages. And um, it's got a lot of like fairy tale, folk tale, magical esque stuff to it. <laughs> and this village uh, comes under attack from some invaders. And so they send all their men out to fight these invaders, and their men get slaughtered. And so um, the rest of the book is the remaining villagers, which are all women and children and like the not able bodied men, are trying to not only, you know, keep the village going, but also um, they're anticipating these attackers' inevitable return to the village to, you know, rape and pillage and plunder and all that. So the village priest uh, decides to build what's essentially a golem, um, which is like a protector, and it comes to life and protects their village. But, um, and he speaks to God about this. God's the one who tells him to do this, but God also specifically says, you know, you must only use him for this purpose. I guess maybe I should mention, obviously I was inspired to do a, a, uh, sort of woodland sprite look. I don't know. <laughs> I thought it'd be fun. Yeah, this book is beautifully written, I thought. It is... The, the author's a poet, and you can definitely tell that reading it. it the, the, I almost said the lyrics. The uh, writing is just very lyrical and beautiful. Um, in fact, I'll read you, I'll read you guys the, this is the first paragraph of the first chapter. The straths of Scotland were made by giants thousands of years ago before the time of man. They carved them out with plows of ice harnessed to the rushing white clouds. Then they stored over them with storm pouches full, scattering grains of snow on the yawning rocks, and the snow sprouted from the rocks as water. Down every cliff and hill face it leapt singing, and wherever it touched the gritty soil seethed into life in a thousand glens. And when the giants saw that their work was finished, they stood on the land that was theirs, and raising their faces to the sun with the wind in their green hair, they became the mountains, and the hollows where their feet had trod were called locks, and forests of new birch and pine and alder grew about their massive thighs, and the waters of their creation sang through them and beyond, down to the distant sea. Yeah, and I read, <laughs> I read that and I was like, wow. I, I mean, I think that's gorgeous imagery. It also sort of sets the tone. I didn't really know what I was getting, what I, what to expect with this book because like I said it was just a random one I, I picked up and thought sounded interesting. But it is very like magical and fairy tale and, and folk tale-esque. And like I mentioned it does draw heavily from the Jewish legend of the Gollum. But it is just, I mean, I felt like there was times reading this where I, I felt like I was in the middle of like an epic power metal song or something. <laughs> or like a folk metal song because uh, just the way he describes the battle, the way he describes the forest, um, the way he describes when they're building this golem or the soldier as they, they call him. They call him something besides, they don't call him a golem in here. Um, but I can't really remember the word they use, and I'm pretty sure I never knew how to pronounce it anyway. <laughs> but they call him the soldier, and he's like a, a huge, like, ten-foot-tall man who protects them. None of the characters are, like, super well-developed, but I really like how the book talked about how much they work together, because, um, you know, they do have to try, to try to support this village, or try to support themselves, when all of their able-bodied men are have been slaughtered. So, um... They really have to come together and figure out what to do in that sense. After the priest makes the soldier, um, he kind of... The soldier and this little girl in the village become friends, and I really um, liked that relationship between them. This book, I thought... Um, I ended up really, really liking it a lot. I gave it four stars. 
but immediately upon finishing it I kind of thought man I, I feel like I should read that again because I think if I was really focused on it that it might have been five stars for me because it was um, in the beginning especially I, I kind of I wasn't super focused on it I was I was kind of in a bit of, of a reading slump and so I paused I can't remember why but I read something else in between after I started this I read like a couple other books before I picked it up again and so I was kind of like I don't remember what I already read and also like the timeline jumps a little I mean not like huge stretches of time but like something will They'll, he'll talk about something that happened and then he'll go back and explain how it happened. So not everything's chronological. Also some of the language used was, you know, it's, it's set in Scotland in the Dark Ages. They used a lot of words that I had never heard before. So that was a little bit difficult as well. Now, this book ended up being um, a lot more than I expected. I don't know if you could categorize it as magical realism perhaps. I'm not really sure. I know a lot of people talk about magical realism, but I honestly don't really know how it's defined. I mean, the the magic is definitely like commonplace in the book. It's not, you know, it's just something that is in this world. But yeah, I, I really ended up liking this book, so if you happen to come across it, I would recommend reading it. Um, if you're someone who likes really straightforward writing you might not enjoy it. It is a little flowery like you know I read the, the passage to you guys. The whole book is written in a similar fashion. Once you get into you know talking about the people in this village and, and what's going on there it's not quite so flowery and such but there are you know bits of that throughout. So if you're not into that kind of thing you probably won't like it, but I am into that kind of thing, and I really, really enjoyed it. It was a beautifully written book, I thought, and I really liked where the story went. Um, like I said, I wasn't really expecting... I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I kind of thought it was just going to be some boring book about a village, because when I bought it, I didn't even realize that it involved, like, a golem um, or anything magical, but it was quite interesting and I really liked the ending and how everything turned out so check it out you guys who are really into keeping your books super immaculate will probably really cringe at this but I accidentally bent the cover in half <laughs> oops so now it's got a big old dent down the center of it my bad. Whatever. Reads the same. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Let me know, uh, what you think of my weird ass makeup? I don't know, I kinda, I kinda dig it. It was fun to do. Uh, I'm thinking about going out in public like this in a minute. I might do that, cause why not? Stay tuned for Megan's video, which should be up tomorrow. And, uh, if you're not subscribed already, then think about doing that. And uh, there'll be links below where you can find myself and Megan other places on the internet. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.